Well, once again, good morning. Great to see so many smiling, smiling faces. I think, first of all, I just would want to say a thank you to all our sponsors this morning who started their, your morning off uh, correct, I hope, with their breakfast, and I hope you enjoyed it, sincerely hope it, but I think we do owe a round of applause to all our sponsors who made it possible this morning. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Jeff Leal, Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and the MPP for Peterborough. Minister Leal also understands the role of municipal government. He has a long and strong basis in municipal government, serving as councillor from 1986 to 2003. After being elected in 2003, he has served as the Minister of Rural Affairs, Chief Government Whip, Parliamentary Assistant in the Ministry of Aboriginal Affairs, the Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Energy, and the Ministry of Economic Development and Ministry of Training in Colleges and Universities, or Minister of Everything, I guess you might say. Please help me welcome the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, the Honourable Jeff Leal. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Ron, for that uh, very kind and uh, very gracious introduction. And Ron, I want to thank you for your great leadership as Chair Roma and everyone that's been here today. As you know, uh, it's wonderful to see so many of my friends uh, that are at this uh, Roma conference. And uh, I certainly want to give a special shout out. There's a lot of my good friends, uh, the elected colleagues uh, from Peterborough County that are here with us this morning. Uh, it goes without saying that uh, I enjoy working with each and every one of you every day. Uh, as you see, leaders here in rural communities are dedicated and driven to building a stronger rural Ontario, a passion I know we both share. As many of you know, I was born and raised in the south end of Peterborough, and to this day, I'm still very proud every day to call Peterborough my home. Peterborough has supported me in achieving my dreams of raising a family and pursuing my passion of serving in public life. And ultimately, in many ways, it helped me share and shape me as an individual. When I was first elected, when I was given the great privilege of representing the people of Peterborough Riding in the legislature in 2003. My kids, Braden and Sinead, were small children, and today they are making their way in this great world. It was always very important to me that my kids experience everything that rural Ontario has to offer. And of course, over the, my last 30 years of public service, I've worked hard to ensure that every Braden and Cheney in rural Ontario has the opportunity to move back home, get a job, build their lives and their hometowns if they choose to do so. Having spent many years, 18 years, as a municipal councillor in Peterborough, I appreciate the challenges that you face every day. That's why I've been working hard day in and day out as your Minister of Rural Affairs to ensure that your voices are heard from town halls and small communities all the way to the cabinet table at Queen's Park. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the provincial election in June is just around the corner. An election that if the opposition were to win would be that everything that we've worked so hard to achieve in rural Ontario in 13 years could be at risk of losing. Later today, later today, you'll likely hear from the leader of the official opposition to tell you that he cares about rural Ontario. But in truth, my friends, he's been spending a lot of time buttering up to the big city folks that he has spent on the back concessions and kitchen tables in small rural communities right across this great province. This June, the reality is that each and every Ontarian, rural and urban, needs to make sure about some fundamental decisions when you cast your ballot. 
Do we want tax breaks for the well-off who want to ensure that someone in minimum wage earns just enough to provide for themselves and their families? Do we want to invest in the next generation through free tuition and extended drug carriage, or do we want to provide tax breaks to foreign companies? Do we want a government that it's balanced the budget or a prop form that includes $12 billion deficit that will have to be paid for program cuts? And my friends, do we want to return to the Harris government era when those of us in municipal government had to deal with massive downloads of roads and bridges for the provincial conservative government to play for their slash and burn agenda? My friends, uh, those of us that were in municipal politics in the late 1990s, I see my good friend uh, Lou Rinaldi here this morning, former distinguished mayor of Brighton, Ontario. We all remember that famous who does what committee. But for us in rural Ontario, that became the who got done in committee. And let me tell you, as my friend John Mark Lalonde used to always tell me, 43% of all the roads and bridges were downloaded in Eastern Ontario. John Mark is with us today. Friends, at the end of the day, it is a Liberal government that will advocate and continue to work hard on your behalf to build rural Ontario to ensure your communities remain a place. Patients and their families having access to publicly funded health care are able to get the right care when they need it. A place where our children have access to post-secondary education based on their ability to learn, not their ability to pay. Where a person's hard work results in the ability to provide for themselves and their families and when you go to the hospital, the first question you're asked is what's wrong, not how much insurance you have in order to pay for your children's prescription. We've been working hard, working hard and listening with you to ensure that we make a real difference in the lives of rural Ontarians, to ensure that no one is left behind when we prosper to make sure that we all do together from investing in rural health care to unprecedented investments in infrastructure, health care, transportation, natural gas, and broadband expansion, we are ensuring that rural Ontario is prepared for the second half of the 21st century. For example, we're taking innovative approaches to delivering health care in rural northern communities through our $2.5 billion investment in Rural Health Hub's pilot program that is providing patients with access to comprehensive range of health care services to better meet the unique needs of their patients and communities. And when it comes to transportation, we know that we're on, a, on the road to achieving our goals to make sure that rural Ontario is not treated the same as big cities like Toronto and Ottawa. Many of our communities cover a vast area, have lower population densities, and sometimes are further away from commercial markets. And we recognize, recognize that our municipalities face the challenge of funding to meet infrastructure needs. That is why working with you to help connect communities, create jobs and boost economic development by investing in the upgrading of infrastructure such as roads and bridges and water systems through Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, which is helping municipalities like Port Hope, to replace the Barrett Street Bailey Bridge. My friends, uh, when Mr. Rinaldi advised me to Port Hope, I've been on that bridge. The bridge was severely deteriorated, which meant that large, heavy vehicles, like ambulances, fire trucks, buses, and trucks could not cross. Thanks to OCIF, the municipality was able to build a new bridge that just opened this past fall. The bridge? is now two lanes, which has increased traffic safety and increased the flow for people in the great community of Port Hope. Port Hope, of course, is just one of the many small communities who are benefiting from the tripling of our investments at OCF in 2019. I also know our rural municipalities are doing excellent work in the presence of changing economic times. That's why we'll continue to invest in programs like the Rural Economic Development Program, or RED, 
which has better positioned communities like the city of Cortha Lakes, Collingwood, Cordwall, Stratford, and Thunder Bay to help attract investment and growth. Thanks to this program, these communities are attracting more tourism, creating more jobs, and boosting regional economic development. We know that high-speed internet is essential in the 21st century. It makes communities investment ready, allows residents to stay in touch with family and friends, and allows small businesses to run their operations remotely. Friends, we made significant progress in bringing broadband to rural Ontario, but we all recognize more needs to be done. By working with our friends, my good friends, in Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus, we're expanding regional broadband to over 95% of households and businesses in Eastern Ontario. When I mentioned there's more work to do, just late last year, we released our long-term infrastructure plan, which continues our commitment to improving access to broadband connectivity for communities across Ontario in rural, northern, and urban communities. Now, last but not least, folks, we all know that main streets help to attract tourism, create jobs, and increase competitiveness for small business who are the backbone of small rural communities, all the way from Thunder Bay to Stratford to Wallaceburg, and indeed, my hometown of Peterborough. That's why I am so pleased to announce you today the additional details of our $26 billion Main Street Revitalization Initiative. This program will help boost competitiveness of small business, revitalize downtowns and Main Street areas in communities right across this great province. This is part of the larger $40 million investment fund over three years through the Main Street Enhancement Fund. This is just one of the many initiatives our government, your government, is taking to help small businesses succeed and thrive in communities in every part of Ontario. We all know that healthy businesses create good jobs and boost local economies. And this funding will help support improvements to your Main Street areas, such as planting trees, painting or installing new pedestrian crosswalks. You can also provide funding directly to local businesses to make sure the schematic upgrades to a street surf, uh, storefront presence. Now, I'm so very pleased to be here at Robo to announce that the allocations for each municipality to eligible to receive will be known in the not too distant future. And I'd like to let you know that municipalities that have fewer than 25,000 residents will benefit more than big cities. I'd like the PCs who want rural residents to pay for Toronto subways, our Main Street Initiative directly invests in municipalities outside the city of Toronto. I just want to uh, share with you, uh, last Saturday, uh, uh, Mary Terry, Mary Terry Lowe is here from Asheville, Norwood. Uh, we were visiting our good friend, uh, Kenny Humphreys, to celebrate his 81st birthday. And we're, when we're chatting about rural Ontario paying for those Toronto subways, I've always remembered one of Kenny Humphreys' favorite sayings, because that prospect of rural Ontario, we always say that that dog just doesn't hunt. You will be looking for more information. The allocations will be posted on my ministry's website very shortly. I'm looking forward to spreading good news with you and touring your main streets to see all the improvements that you're able to make. Friends, one thing is perfectly clear. We must work together to build an Ontario up for everyone. By doing so, by doing so, we'll help to ensure economic growth in rural Ontario that is more inclusive so that our growing economy delivers real benefits for our rural citizens. Together, together we must ensure rural Ontario continues to be the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. I look forward to the opportunity of our Liberal government to continue the great work with you for a number of four years to come. I want to thank Ron and your team for making this ROBA one of the great events right here in Ontario and for organizing another great conference. I often like to finish a speech with a favorite saying of mine. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, 
go together. And in your communities, we want you to go far, and we want to do it together. God bless you all. Thank you so very much.